Okay, so I'd like to uh, derive here the equations that describe a fed batch reactor. A fed batch reactor is normally uh, a mechanically agitated or stirred reaction vessel. Usually it's jacketed to provide heat transfer. Uh, and a fed batch what we normally have is one of the reactants uh, charged in the vessel and then at time t equals naught you start uh, an addition usually of a one of the other reactants. So we're going to say that the addition rate is q meters cubed per second and that, that has a concentration of an added component A of C A naught moles per meter cubed. And then immediately we can write down then that the molar flow rate of A into the vessel, F A naught, is equal to Q times C A naught. So that's expressed in moles per second. So the flow rate in moles per second is just the volumetric flow rate multiplied by the concentration. Okay, then we're adding that uh, into the vessel, which at any given time has a volume of V cubic meters. And that varies with time because we're doing the addition uh, all the way through. And at any given time as well, we've got a concentration of A in the reactor of CA moles per cubic meter. And once again, we can just use that relationship to derive the number of moles. So the number of moles of A at any given time is equal to the volume in the reactor multiplied by the concentration, and that's just in moles. Uh, and then we'll define one other term, which is the reaction rate of A. So that's RA, which is the reaction rate of A, and that, that uh, if A is being consumed, as it is in our case, that would be a negative value because it's, uh, it's reacting away and being consumed. For a, for a product, it would be positive. So that's the reaction rate, RA, in moles per cubic meter per second. Uh, before we start, as always, we need to state the assumptions we're going to make. Uh, the first one is that the reactor is well mixed. What that means is that composition, temperature, etc., at any point in the reactor is the same uh, as everywhere else and equal to the average composition, and that our added material Q is mixed in rapidly. We're also going to assume that we've got constant density so that the density in the reactor is equal to the density of the added material and that that density doesn't vary with time over the uh, time period of interest and again for the sake of this derivation we're going to assume that the addition rate Q is constant <coughs> okay so to do the derivation we do a material balance over a time interval of delta t. So time interval delta t seconds. And we use the usual material balance equation, which is that input minus output plus generation equals accumulation. So in other words, what goes in minus what goes out plus any material which is generated by reaction is equal to the, the build-up in the system. And, and in this case, we've got a, a batch process, so it's a transient process, so we will have uh, accumulation. However, we don't have any output. Fed batch is characterized by doing a, a, an addition with no removal uh, of any material. So we can 
first of all do an overall material balance, uh, an overall mass balance. But because we've got constant density, we can uh, effectively do a, a volumetric balance. So the input over delta T is Q multiplied by delta T, that's cubic meters being added. Output is zero. We're not generating any mass, so overall there's no generation term for the, um, uh, the overall balance, and that equals uh, the accumulation. And the accumulation is the volume at T plus delta T minus the volume that was there at the beginning of the time interval at T. And we can just rewrite that as delta V. So if we drop the zeros and collect the terms together, actually we can and divide by delta T. We can rewrite that as Q equals delta V over delta T. And as delta T tends to zero, then we can replace that with the with the derivative, so Q equals dV by dt. And, and intuitively that makes sense. That's just saying that the, the rate of change of the uh, volume in the, in the reactor with time is equal to the addition rate, and the addition rate is constant. So you've got a, a constant dV by dt, which is uh, the same as the addition rate. Okay, so now let's do the same thing for component A. So in this case, we can say uh, over delta T, the input uh, is equal to F A naught, define that above, minus the output, which is zero again, plus generation. So we've got a reaction term this, this time, because A is reacting away. So we can have R A, which is the reaction rate moles per cubic meter per second. So we need to multiply by the volume V and by the time interval delta T. Uh, and of course, we've got to multiply our molar flow rate by delta T as well. So we've got um, FA naught times delta T, which is the number of moles added in time interval delta T. And then we've got RA times V times delta T, which is the number of moles which have been consumed due to the reaction. And that's equal to Na at the end of our time interval, number of moles in the reactor, minus the number of moles in the reactor at the beginning of our time interval, uh, Nat. And that can simply be written as Na, delta Na. So if we now divide by delta T, we get that FA naught plus RA times by V is equal to delta NA over delta T and as delta T tends to zero, that becomes the derivative DNA by dt. And we could rewrite, rewrite that uh, in terms of concentrations. So we can replace Q, uh, it could replace FA naught by Q times CA naught. So I have Q times CA naught plus RA times V equals D by DT. And we're going to replace NA by V times CA. So that's D by DT of V times CA. Now both V and CA vary with time. So we've got the, um, the differential of a product there. So uh, d of x times y by dt is equal to 
uh, x times dy by dt plus y times dx by dt. So we can, uh, we can sum that. Then we get that c q times c a naught plus r a times v equals v d c a by d t plus c a times d v by d t. But d v by d t is equal to q. So we can substitute in here and we get q times c a naught so r a times v is equal to v d c a by d t plus q times c a. And if we then um, divide throughout by v, and just rearrange this slightly, we can get that r a is equal to q over v multiplied by c a minus c a naught plus d c a by d t. And you can see that if q equals zero in this expression, then actually that term disappears and you get the expression for a, a true batch reactor. Uh, you can also see that that first term is a little bit, uh, looks quite similar to the expression for a, um, uh, a CSTR, where of course that term isn't present. Uh, so, so this expression is um, a little bit like combining a CSTR with a batch reactor. Uh, and that that's the that's the expression that you'd use to uh, to describe uh, a fed batch process